How's it going everyone? Nico here with The Wooden Spoon and we have a very special episode of The Sit Down. Finally, in person, for maybe the second time in 2020 for me. Yeah. And we're joined by Tessa Del Zopo. How's it going, Tessa? Really well, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming in the midst of a, pan <laughs> in the midst of a pandemic, finally. It feels so good to do a podcast in person. I've, yeah. been, I've been stuck on Zoom since early March. Yeah. But I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because I get to yeah. talk to so many more people as opposed to, I guess, the people in the community. But turns out you're also in the Niagara Falls Buffalo community yeah, that's with awesome. me. So it's just one of the cool things of social media and connecting with people and yeah. realizing it's a crazy small world. For sure. Yeah. So for how sure. have you handled the pandemic so far? <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but I think everybody has to adapt in their own way, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, for me, the same as you, like you, you start a podcast and mm -hmm. um, I had to translate my live show into a podcast and it is, it's like a blessing, mm -hmm. you know, in disguise, I think, because it's weird. Like I, I found that, um, you know, maybe this is leading us in a direction that we might not have got, gotten yep. before or like made connections we might not have gotten before. 100%. Forced everybody to just stop for mm -hmm. a minute and like breathe and, and kind of recollect. So. And then what's the name of your podcast again? For a everybody? Night with a Medium. A night with a Medium. Are you like one of the only people that do like a podcast kind of live show style? Like because I've never really... Oh, I've yeah. personally never seen anything like that. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely different. Um, you know, I think everybody kind of jumped into like the podcast life mm -hmm. right now because it's all that we have for entertainment. Um, but I think with my show, I definitely tried to be different than mm -hmm. what you see. And one of the ways I do that is as a medium, I take live calls and I do questions. Um, so I always start with an interview with whoever I choose to talk to and then someone I like do. Vincent Pastore yes. or <laughs> my buddy Goomba Johnny Anthony Rodeo yeah Vincent Curatola um, so I know that's a very cool one. yeah I'm a actually, huge huge Sopranos fan yes um yeah me and both Vincent's are buddies now <laughs> um I work with Vincent Curatola every week still so very cool yeah it's been great to make connections and um you know meet people but also connect with what I do as a medium so I find that you know people in entertainment they have a very strong connection to the spirit world or have a level of intuition on their own. Um, why, do you, why do you think that is? I think from my own personal experience as a medium growing up, um, you know, I, I was in entertainment dance performing since I was three and I didn't realize until later that, you know, as, um, as a medium, somebody who picks up on energy and we channel it, you also, you, you need a kind of an escape or like a channel and I found that people who have that form it into some form of art. So whether mm. it be like acting, dancing, um, I started making that connection as I met more and more people and realized like people have the same ability as me or they have intuition. And um, so then I started talking to people mm. in entertainment, you know, being like Vincent Pastore and uh, Vincent Curatola, Anthony Rodea, Goomba Johnny, like all these people, you know, and I'm like putting two and two together and they all have a connection somehow to mm. paranormal, you know, intuition. So um, cool. Yeah. And like I, we, I was asking before, um, it, it feels similar on a Zoom call, just like in person. Yeah. Too. It's crazy because you wouldn't think that. You would. Mm -hmm. Most people think we have to be like this in mm -hmm. order for me to deliver a reading, but really it's just energy. And um, you know, prior to the pandemic, I was doing readings nationally, internationally, all different countries, which is crazy. Um, and then with the pandemic, it just forced everybody to go virtual. And I think more people are realizing that you know just. Uh, energy exchange with voices on the mm -hmm. phone it's it's the same thing so I could pick up as easily on the phone as I would in person That's so cool it's cool because I mean someone from Delphi from the outside would not ever think right. that but um I guess taking it back to your childhood when was the first time you really discovered that like uh, something something's up maybe I'm communicating with somebody that maybe it passed on yeah um, I was my I have two boys at home so I was like their age I was like four or five years old and um, I got really sick and I ended up in the hospital uh, for a major surgery at like five wow. years old at Buffalo Children's. And um, I remember seeing these white figures coming into my room because I spent a long time in the hospital and they surrounded my bed. I wasn't afraid of it, it felt very comforting mm -hmm. and you know, and that was like the first time I remember. And then when I went back home, um, I would have this man come into my room every night and as a kid I was scared of it, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know what it is. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I actually asked this person because he kept coming into my room and he would come to my bed and then he would disappear. What was <laughs> so the was, timeline before you 
decided to communicate with him? It was a while. Mm -hmm. Like, I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I can because imagine. I was scared. And he would come in, and it was weird because he looked a lot like my mother. Like, he reminded me okay. the typical Italian, like, curly hair, you know. And at first, being, like, really tired, and he's walking in, I'm almost like, okay, is that my mom or who is this? And it wasn't. And then he would disappear. And then, I, you know, after maybe a year, I finally, oh. you know, asked him why he kept coming into my room and scaring me. <laughs> And he sat down on my bed and he explained that he was just protecting me and he wanted to make sure I was okay. So I went to my mom and I'm like, there's this guy that's coming into my room and this is what he was wearing, this is what he looked like, this is how he said he died. And it ended up being my uncle, which would be my mom's brother okay. who passed in the house wow. before I was born. What was your mom's reaction to all this? <laughs> was, are, like, are you one of the first mediums in your family? or no. Okay, you're not. Um, my grandmother on my mom's side 100% I know that I got it from her and that mm -hmm. we got it from her um, and my mom is also a medium okay so your mom but wasn't too shocked by, by no, you saying this but the weird thing is is growing up Italian you know we were Catholic we went to church and like nobody talked about that like mm -hmm. it was kind of like a taboo thing and mm -hmm. so my grandmother denied it until the day she died that she had you know this ability okay. um, yet she would deliver messages and she'd have dreams and she would say these things to us and um, you know, as I get older, I'm like, yeah, okay, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom suppressed it because she, obviously, people didn't want to talk about it back then. It was kind of taboo. And until I came along, she really never really wanted to bring it forward to go public with it. Okay. Um, so when I told her, it was almost this moment of like, okay, I'm not crazy. My daughter has the same ability as me. Mm -hmm. So together, we kind of um, just enhanced it, and I started using it publicly. So cool. So you're... What, how old were you at this point? You were said like... Yeah, I was probably, I mean, I was very young. Um, I didn't start going public with anything until like my teens, like my okay. early teens. What was it like just all throughout school, like elementary school, middle school, and high school? Yeah. Was it just a little crazy or what was like, what was all that experience like? It was weird because like you realize at a point that you're seeing and feeling things that other people are not. Mm -hmm. And then of course, like, you know, during school, middle school, high school, there's so much judgment around you. You know, for, for anybody in general, let alone somebody who feels so different. So I kept it very quiet. I think it's funny because once I went public with everything, these people who went to high school with me and who knew me, they were like, what do you mean? <laughs> 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 what do you mean you see that stuff and you do that? You know, because most people knew me as the performer, the dancer. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't known as a medium. So uh, because I hit it, yep. you know. So it was very strange. And, you know, you deal with a lot of stuff growing up. Um, but I realized, I think that's how I knew that when I went into a dance studio or I, I was performing in some way, that I was releasing that and I felt better, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it was kind of my escape, the studio. So that's kind of how I made the connection between entertainment and what I did Very as a cool. medium. So, and then what was the, did you, when did you know that there was actually like a career in what you were born with basically? When yeah. did you kind of make that connection that, well, maybe there's a career out of this, maybe there's a way I could help people and yeah. and make a living out of this. It's strange because, like, for the longest time, nobody would have ever known that you could do something like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and it wasn't until you saw shows and stuff coming out. Like, I think the original person on TV was, like, Sylvia Brown when I was very young. She mm -hmm. was, like, the OG of <laughs> mediums back in the day. She was on Montel and all those shows back in the day. And um, I would watch her and she came to Buffalo when I was very young mm -hmm. and uh, my mom and I we went to see her and I realized I'm like okay so she's up on a stage and she's reading to people I love the stage I've been mm -hmm. on stage since I was three so this is cool um, and it wasn't until people like Teresa Caputo who came on with the Long Island medium um, you know you recognize like oh okay so other people are doing this people are watching so it means it's okay mm -hmm. it's not as taboo anymore uh, and she's Italian you yeah. know so it was kind of cool um, and then when I started reading publicly, I realized I was drawn to the stage and doing it mm -hmm. on a stage and kind of, you know, do, working an audience. And um, it was just kind of one thing after another until I got my opportunity and I just kept pushing with it until... Mm. It's so cool how you see something come full circle like that. And yeah. Like, it's cool for me, and I say this, like, with almost everybody I talk to, it's cool to see somebody doing kind of what they were born to do and what they love to do. Yeah. So it's really cool to see that, and I think that's awesome that you're doing yeah. that, for sure. absolutely. You want to be able to do that, you know? Like, everybody says, like, if you love what you do, then mm -hmm. you don't work a day in your life. Yeah, you know? so what was, like, what was one of the first opportunities that you had to, like, make money? being a medium what yeah. was that it, it's actually a very 
crazy story because I went, I didn't, I mean, I went to school, I have a master's degree. Um, I went for teaching, mm -hmm. uh, that was my bachelor's, and then for my master's, I went for clinical mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I wanted to help people. You know, I was very drawn to children. Um, I obviously was drawn to the mind and how the mind works mm -hmm. and um, wanted to help people. But while I was at work at like a school or in clinical settings where I'm doing like internships and stuff, I'm like realizing that I'm reading these people. Mm -hmm. I'm reading my students, I'm reading <laughs> the staff at the schools. I'm you know, supposed to be working with mental health and yet I'm reading them. And I realized very quickly that being confined to like a school or a clinical setting was just not going to get me to help people the way that I knew I could. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had my two kids, I became a single mom, and it was this moment of just, it was almost like the universe kind of ripped everything away from me because I had to make a decision. And it was kind of like, you can either go this way and stick to something that you're not passionate about or take a leap of faith and jump into mediumship completely and just trust that something's gonna happen out of it. Mm -hmm. So I did, I made the jump and it was hard. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard and it's scary, mm -hmm. you know, especially with two kids because you're looking at them and you're like, I have to make this work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept pushing and I believed in it and I kept pushing and no matter what anybody said, I didn't stop. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's kind of how it happened. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I did see one of your Instagram posts that you don't like it being called a gift. Yeah. What, what's the, why, why? Why don't you like being called a gift? Because I guess a lot, I'm sure most people almost like tell you, oh, it's a gift that you have or yeah. something along those lines. You see a lot, that's actually a good question because you see a lot of people with my ability um, and they, they call it a gift, you mm -hmm. know, they refer to it. And I think a lot of people view it as a gift. So, um, but I think that you can view that with anybody who has a special ability. So you look at doctors, you know, if they're saving somebody's life, that's technically, they're handing them a gift. Mm -hmm. But the doctor doesn't consider what they're doing a gift. They consider it their ability. You see what I mean? I gotcha. And that I, sense. yeah, and I find for myself, like, if I were to say, oh, I have this gift, I'm like putting myself up on a pedestal <laughs> that I don't necessarily belong I on. I see that, yep. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I just think it's more of a humble way of, um, of what I do and you know I believe in that wholeheartedly mm -hmm. so if people view it as a gift that's beautiful and I love what I do and you know I hope that I can everybody that walks away from me feels better than before mm -hmm. <laughs> but I like I said I consider it an ability mm -hmm. now do you think either of your kids have the ability they do yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, especially my oldest so my oldest it's so funny he's like my mini me mm -hmm. um, it was weird because bef like when I was pregnant, I knew, I, I said to myself, I'm like, it's gonna be a boy, he's got curly hair. Like I knew what he looked like, you know what I mean? And I had this special connection to him and I'm not playing favorites, I love <laughs> both of my kids. Um, but I knew what he looked like and I just had this weird connection to him. And um, as he started growing, I recognized that he was seeing the same things and the same mm -hmm. things that I experienced as a kid, he's now experiencing. Um, and then it was weird, I think he was like two or three. Yeah, he was like two or three years old. And my grandmother died, I think like three years ago now. And, um, but the morning that she passed, it was totally unexpected. Like she was mm -hmm. a feisty Italian woman going to my father's school. My father was a teacher. She was ready to go be with him for the day and it happened very suddenly. And my son the night before said to me, mommy, why is Nana going to see the angels? Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's not <laughs> she's fine it went it even went over my head you know and the following morning he looked at me and he goes um nana went to go see the angels and i called my dad because i'm like what the heck mm -hmm. and i called my father and he was there with the ambulance oh, and so he called it he knew it and um i knew right then and there like it just solidified it for me that he had the same ability mm -hmm. So, wow, that's a crazy story. Yeah, it's, insane. it's crazy. It threw me off, and I'm, <laughs> I am do it every single day, and I'm like, did he just read this? Like, did that just happen? It's mm -hmm. crazy to see. No, that's your oldest? Yes. Do, do you think your youngest has the ability? <laughs> it's so funny because they're so different. Like, my one is, is super calm and, like, very intuitive and very, you know, and then the other one's, like, the one that runs into walls, and he's, you know, <laughs> crazy. Um, but at the same time, he's very empathic. He just knows what people need, and he could feel people. Okay. So I think he has a level of intuition. It's just a different pathway, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you were doing the podcast. You do theaters. Do you do one-on-ones as well? You, yeah. you do it all. I do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I do everything. Yeah, it's been uh, it's interesting because I think right now during the pandemic, people really need 
um, that interaction. You know, they want validation, they want guidance, healing, especially in times like this. So, you know, I've been doing private readings the mm -hmm. entire time. What's that process like for somebody who's never been through it? Because I've personally never been through it. My mom has a, a bunch of times, but yeah. I, what's the process like? Um, for me as a medium, I connect, I obviously connect with people who have passed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when somebody comes and sits with me, immediately the first things that come through is, is whoever's around them, their loved ones. Um, and what I seek as a medium is to evidentially bring validation that their loved ones are here. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that they're here, there's specific things that like they, only that person would know to mm -hmm. validate that it's them. And then I always ask them to give some sort of closure or answers or guidance for the people that are still here um, so that they can move forward feeling better about their passing. So, um, you know, it could be anything from, you know, we hold a lot of regrets, I think, here mm -hmm. in the physical world, you know. When they pass, they're fine, you know, they, they are at peace and anything that happened to them here in the physical world is gone. Um, we're the ones who suffer, really. You know, we, we miss them and we, we go over things like, could we have done this? Um, you know, what if we were to do this? Could we have saved them? We have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And so for them to come through and answer those questions and maybe bring some closure, you know, um, it really helps people. So I do that. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with people. I've done investigations with you know, missing persons or really? homicides. Yeah, to bring That's answers. Super and, interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy the different avenues that there are, I guess. And um, I just kind of dove into all mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess to almost dive a little deeper into that. Yeah. So you obviously believe in obviously life after death, but what would you say to somebody who's almost skeptic on for like a religious purpose? Because like Italian Americans, all Catholic, mm -hmm. hard headed, <laughs> like. Yeah. What would you say to somebody like that, that almost is just skeptic because of religious purposes? Yeah. You know, I think everybody's entitled to their beliefs. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, I, growing up Catholic, you know, I obviously, I maintain what I've learned, um, but I've, I've researched and I know a lot about other religions too, mm -hmm. and so I don't confine myself to just one. So I think that helps me to understand where people are coming from. Um, and I never push it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think in today's world, it's more, what's weird is I've done readings for people of all religious beliefs. Um, and so I think the spirit world, it connects people in a weird way. It's like you may have grown up under a certain religion, but I think everybody has had some sort of experience that might be unexplainable. Mm -hmm. um, and so I find it to be this weird medium, right, between mm -hmm. all the different religions or belief systems. Um, and I come across skeptics all the time. It's, it's actually, to me, it's kind of entertaining and not in a bad <laughs> way, but it's funny because, you know, I do, like, my show over at the casino, there was people that never expected to get called on. And, I mean, I had a crowd of 550, almost 600 people in the room. And wow. it's always the ones that don't want to or didn't expect to get called on that I walk up to. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a man, at, you know, that was kind of skeptical, and he had lost his mother like three days prior to my show. Oh, wow. And it was like one of the first people that came through. And to see somebody be skeptical, but have such an experience that it changes their way of thinking in a positive way, I love it. Now, now for some of the people that, um, I guess kind of think like, oh, you can't believe in God and also believe in mediumship. It, what, what's your response to something like that? I absolutely believe in a higher power. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason that, you know, I connect and do what I do in a positive way is because I believe in that. Um, and you know, I, it's not, I think that like you get so confined, like I said, so say we grew up Catholic and you know, there's all these different um, rules within the religion that we follow and whatever. Um, but I think that this goes for anybody. If you're living your life in a positive way and you're trying to help people and you're just a good person, I don't think it really matters. You know what I'm 100 saying? 100% agree. Um, for me personally, like I said, I do believe in a higher power, and I mm -hmm. think that that's why um, keeping that faith and that what I what I believe in and working in the greater good is why I've gotten to where I am now. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Now, there's a weird. I, I don't know if it's just weird. I I think I've heard you talk about this before, maybe with the with Goomba Johnny, but something about Italian Americans and mediumship. How the I don't I, I don't even really know how to explain it, but yeah. like they're more apt to be mediums or so, something along those lines. Cause yeah. I mean, I guess we all have stories of our relatives kind of just yeah. knowing stuff just out of the blue and yeah. not really putting it into light. But 
Is there like an association with, like being Italian American and also being a medium? Yeah, I feel like I I don't maybe I'm biased because I'm Italian. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I but I have found or I've noticed a very strong connection between Italian Americans having the ability. You know, you see, like look at Teresa Caputo. There's there's many people out there with. Um, you know, a bigger name who do this. Kim Russo, she's one of Goomba Johnny's friends. Mm -hmm. She's a medium. Um, and they're all from like the East Coast, you know? And, and so if you think about it, when Italians came here, a lot of them migrated toward the East Coast, mm -hmm. you know, New York and all those things. And um, I've seen these people come out of this area, Italians, with the same gift. I don't know what the connection is. I mean, I have family in Naples still. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have family in Italy. The ones I'm close to are in Naples. And, um, you know, I've done readings for them. I've talked to them about what I do, and they fully believe in that over there. I mean, even if you look at The Sopranos, right? Yeah. They go to Italy in The Sopranos, mm -hmm. and there's psychics there. They talk about it in The Sopranos, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's deep-rooted in the belief system. Um, I don't know. I just, me and Gubajani were talking about this, and he said the same thing. Like, we really believe that there's some connection. I'm not sure what. Um, I had Chris Jason on, uh, was it last week or the week before? And he plays Frank Sinatra in Vegas for the Rat Pack. So cool. Yeah, and he's from the East Coast. And he brought up that there was, um, I think it's the, it was a festival. It was an Italian festival that he was at. And he had talked about how there was like gypsies and readers <laughs> lined up at these Italian festivals. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's a connection, you know. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, but I don't know. Yeah, so what's um, the rest of the, I guess not really the rest of the outlook on 2020, we're almost done with 2020, but um, <laughs> what does 2021 look like for you? Well, fingers crossed, you know, I'm still in talks with the casinos um, and other venues in different states and things like that. You like doing the live shows I love it. much more? Yeah, I, I do. Bet. <laughs> it's just my, I think because I grew up on a stage, it's comfortable to me, you know, it's, it's like home. A stage to me is like my second home. I'm more comfortable sometimes on a stage than I am anywhere else, uh, which is crazy to think about. But fingers crossed, 2021, um, I'm looking to get back on a stage. Um, you know, I've been in talks with the casinos and things like that, and they're just trying to reconfigure what that looks mm -hmm. like. Um, so yeah, I'm pushing for that. Obviously, I'm gonna continue doing my podcast. Will you continue and just no matter what happens because it seems like it's it's doing really well and yeah. I'm sure it gives a lot more people access to you and you access to them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I love it. You know, I, I don't think, like I said, I think that the um, as hard as the pandemic was on people, it forced us to kind of sit down and redirect our energy. And who knows, would I have made the connections that I did or network the way that I did um, if I was so busy doing shows, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, live shows. So I'm definitely going to continue doing my podcast. Um, I enjoy it. I love being able to connect with people and do live readings that mm -hmm. way. Um, and as soon as I could get back on a stage, I'm hopping back on. <laughs> I kept saying, I said it to somebody, I'm like, it's going to be like a bull going into a ring the minute that they allow me back on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to stop me. So That's awesome. Yeah. One more question that I, I guess I forgot to ask is, yeah. are you able to like almost turn it off, I guess, per se, or anything? Not really. No. I think that it's kind of a misconception. You know, people who have the ability, but maybe they don't understand it or they're afraid of it, they think they can just shut it off completely. Um, you can't necessarily do that. If you're born with that ability, you just have it. Mm -hmm. um, I find that people who try to shut it down, it'll come out as like anxiety and um, because you're, you're constantly picking up on energy and it's just a matter of like, what do you do with it? Either you hold on to it and it'll turn into things like anxiety and mm -hmm. sleeplessness, headaches, um, or you can learn about it and learn how to channel it and do whatever it is that you should be doing with it. Do you find it almost like the, the more you practice or work at it, like the easier it becomes to kind of control it almost? Yeah, you can definitely create boundaries for yourself. You okay. know, when I was a kid, um, it, all children, animals, they're very open. You know, they don't have boundaries. There's no logic really until a certain age. And they're very open to it and it becomes very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, I used to lay like this in my bed because I didn't want to hear the voices and the, the sounds and the things that I would see. Um, and then as I got older, I learned because I didn't have anybody to really teach me, but I learned that I can create boundaries mm -hmm. and um, protect myself kind of in a sense. So. Now, 
I don't ever shut it off. I always say I'm always on. <laughs> <laughs> so like even like just meeting like me yeah. or like right away. Always on. Wow. <laughs> always on. Um, but at the same time, like I've learned to obviously live with it and you know there's times where I'm like don't I don't want to talk right now <laughs> <laughs> you know and you have to shut it off um if I'm out in public you know you see yeah um, what is that like true <laughs> like just out in public have you ever just confronted somebody out of the blue oh my god I have awesome. but it's not the same as what you see on tv mm -hmm. so like when you watch the shows where they approach people in public there's like I mean you have to make sure that person is open to it mm -hmm. there's people who literally will like want to call the police on you if you start doing <laughs> so you know it's like people have boundaries too or they might not believe in it um so I have you know said things to people but I've always made sure that there you know go. they wanted me to do so or that they were open to it um but you know I also as I go through I don't know, a store or something like that. I've learned to just kind of block it out mm -hmm. so that I'm not bombarded with everybody's relatives. <laughs> <laughs> not to put, not to put like, not to put you on the spot or anything, yeah. but did you get anything just from meeting me or? I do feel a grandfather that stands a around you. Okay. Yeah, very strongly. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I had one grandfather. My one grandfather still have and my other grandfather passed when I was 10 maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's very protective of you. Mm -hmm. And it was weird because when we were going up on the elevator, I'm like, not right now, Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he's open so to this, cool. but you do have a grandfather with you. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for being my first in-person podcast. I'm so happy that we were able to do this. Yeah. And where can everybody find you? Where, they, where can they follow you? Where could they, I guess, do business with you or anything? Yeah. Plug anything. Um, so I have my Facebook page, Tessa Del Zappo Psychic Medium. So you could definitely follow me on there. I broadcast my podcast from there every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I also do it on my YouTube channel under Tessa okay. Del Zappo. So it broadcasts live every single week. Uh, my website, TessaDelZappo.com, is launching. It's not, you know, it's up there, but mm -hmm. it's not completely launched yet, but that's coming fairly soon. Um, but I always tell people if you want a reading, you can either email me. Uh, find me on Facebook. Okay. All the links will be, wherever you're listening to this or watching this, all the links for Tessa's um, stuff will be in the description. Awesome. Thank but you. Thank you so much again yeah. for doing this. Um, this is the mo one of the most fun I've ever had <laughs> doing a podcast. Yeah. But everybody else, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Ciao. Yeah.